ready for your warmer. So make sure that you've got a clear space ready for you to work. You've got all your equipment with you that you might need and a drink. Make sure you're feeling well and happy to exercise for today. If you can, make sure you've got good ventilation as well, ready for your full work. Remember, we're going to be working through this warmer in your main section. You'll work at a level that you can manage. We're going to be using the RPE scale, so make sure you're familiar with that. Uh, but we will be helping you prompting you as we go. Right, so we're starting off with the feet, hip width apart, nice and tall through the spine, shoulders roll back and down the spine, just thinking about your posture, thinking about your breathing. When we're ready, we start with a gentle, gentle march on the spot. So we're thinking of mobilizing through the feet. So all the way through this workout, you're going to work the speed that suits you. Don't feel like you have to keep up. Or if I'm going to be slow, go at the speed that suits you best. We're thinking of peeling the feet off the floor. Heels coming off first. Toes coming back down first. But weight is staying steady as we go. We've got a few more of these to do. We're going to bring the feet to a stop. Get the shoulders to a circle. All the way up, back, round, down and forward. And again, all the way up, back, down, around and forward. You've got two more of those. Just getting the shoulders ready. Lovely, we're back into a march. So we're starting now to get that heart rate to, to lift, to get the breathing uh, to be a little bit deeper. But it should all be nice and gentle at the moment for you. So we're just getting the body ready for the workout that you're going to do. We're thinking about mobilizing the joints. We're going to start from the bottom. We're going to start with the ankles. You're going to tap your toe in front. You're pushing your toe away from you. Feeling the muscles on the front of the shin, having a little stretch as we go. We're going to bring in the arms. They're just going to reach up in front. So one arm and then the other. Just comfortably begin with. Relax through the hands. Shoulders staying back and down. Nice and tall through the spine. We've got a few more of these to do. Lovely. Give me four more. Three, two, and we're back to a march. So each time we're marching, we're going to do it with a little bit more purpose little bit bigger so that we can start to build up that heart rate, build up the warmth in your body. Lovely. We're going to keep the feet moving. So we're going to keep them marching. With your hands, your thumb is coming over the shoulder, then the other side. So we come over with one hand, then the other. You're leading back with your elbow, making that move as big as you can, really warming up through the shoulders. Last few of these. That's great. One more on each side, and we're back into that march. So we make it a little bit bigger. Elbows are driving back. Lovely. Well done. Four more. Three, two. We're tapping the toe out to the side and in. The feet are landing with a little bit of a gap between them each time. Toes going out to the side. So we're feeling the muscles on the hip, just being able to have a lovely movement. If you want to, you can add in an arm movement, just lifting it up to the side and back down. Just one arm at a time. You can go same arm as leg. You can go opposite arm to leg if you prefer. Do whatever doesn't confuse you, okay? you got four more, three, two, and we're marching. So we're making that march that little bit bigger again. Well done. Keep marching. I'm going to turn on the diagonal so you can see that you stay facing the direction you were in. What we're going to do with the toe, we're going to tap behind, tap behind. Only the toe is tapping down. Arms are reaching forward at about hip height. So we're starting to warm up through the hip, through the front of the hip as well. But we're making sure that the spine is staying nice and long. Shoulders are relaxed. Well done. You should be feeling a little bit warmer already, but it should be manageable. Okay, so we're working up to around an 11 on that RPE scale, between a 9 and an 11 at the moment. That's great. Give me four more. Three, two, and one, and we're marching, so we make that march a little bit bigger again. Well done. Feet go wide. Go so about shoulder width apart for me. From here, we're rocking from side to side. It doesn't matter which way you're going, okay? So, we turn the heel up to 
to your bottom, curl and curl. We're keeping the knees back, so we are starting to get a bit of a stretch through the front of the thigh. With the arms, they can either swing from one side to the other, or if you prefer, they can reach in front and pull back. So usually the arm movement that you feel happiest with. That's great. You're placing the foot carefully each time, and remember you're going at a speed that suits you best. If you need to slow down, if you need to leave the arms out, most of this is now for the thighs. Remember, adding the arms will always make it a little bit more difficult, so it will get the heart rate up, which is what we're planning to do within this warm-up. Well done. Four more. Three, two, and we're marching. To make that march bigger, we're wanting the heart rate to elevate. You should be breathing deeper than you were at the start, but it still should be manageable. Well done. You've got four more of these. Okay, we're knee lifting again. The knee's coming up in front. Hand is tapping. So, we can either keep it lower if you need to. If you're able to, we want the hand to go that little bit higher with that reach and pull movement. That's great. We've got eight of these. Seven, six, and five. Four more. Good. Back to a march again. So we're marching nice and big. Well done. A few more. That's great. So we're picking those elbows back. Knees are coming a little bit higher. That's good. Lovely. And turning again, so we're tapping back. So from here we go. Tap it back and in, back and in. Hands are reaching that little bit higher, just up on that diagonal. That's good. Well done. Big push. Big push. So the heel is staying off the floor. Just the toe is tapping back. So we're thinking about the muscles on the front of the hip. That's good. Four more. And you're marching. So the march is a little bit bigger again. You should be breathing deeper. So it's still able to hold that breathy conversation. Okay, so we're working just that little bit harder than we were a moment ago. Well done. Keep the feet moving. We're going to do a big circle over the top of the head. Still lead back with your elbow. So we're still thinking about that shoulder mobility. Big push through. Well done. Good. Four more. Last two. And we're marching. Feet go wide. Well done. Okay. We're rocking it side to side. So we tap over and over. With the heel, we're curling back towards your bottom. With the arms this time, we reach and pull. That's good. Last few of these. Four more. So four, three, two. Leave the arms out. Just your heels, curling back towards your bottom. Hands are going to come round towards the lower back. Breathe the shoulder blades and elbows back. Just feel that stretch through the chest for me. Good. Give me four more with the legs. And you're marching. Great. Well done. Last few of these then. Nearly there. <laughs> We're going to finish up with half stars. So, toes are tapping. Out to the side. Arms are reaching up. Because the arm movement is higher, you may need to slow the movement down. We want as big a movement as you can manage. But you're in control of the movement. We're not swinging the arms around, we're controlling that lift and the lower. You've got four more on each side. Three more. Last two. And one. And march it out. So you should now be feeling warmer. You should be breathing deeper. You should be ready for your main section. So go and grab yourself a drink, and I'll see you here in a minute. So we're into our main section for this exercise, which is going to be our ball workout. So if you need to, you can pause the video now to be able to set your room. You will need a ball and a chair and a spare bit of wall. If you do need to pause the video, I'll see you in a sec. So welcome back. Okay, so we're starting off with our gentle march. We've done our warm-up. You've got your drink available as well. Each exercise is going to be for a minute of 
15 seconds. If you need to pause, if you need a rest, you can always march on the spot until you're ready to join back in. Remember, you're working at your own level. We're going to be using the RP scale, so I'll give you prompts for that one as we go. Our first exercise then. We start in the next size that can increase your heart rate. We want the feet to be a little bit wider, and we're starting off with our leg curl. So we did this one in the warm up as well, so the heel is curling up towards your bottom. So we want to get that heart rate up. So we're looking at working at an RPE of around about a 13, so that you can hold a breathy conversation. For you, this could be leg curling. It could be arms reaching. Remember, the higher the arms go, the harder it is to do. So we want to get that heel curling towards your bottom. Knees are soft. Arms are reaching. But any time you need to lower them, that's fine. If you want to work that little bit harder again, you can always use your water bottle in your hands as a weight. Or if you have hand weight, then you can use them. But make sure that you are working at a level that you can control that movement. So you're doing really well. You should be finding that your heart rate is already lifting. Just that little bit. And if you were having a conversation with me, that you'd notice you were breathing a little bit deeper. You're doing so well there. That's great. So are you able to take it up to that level 13 on the RP scale? If you are, brilliant. If you need to ease it off, then that's fine too. We've only got 15 seconds left. Keep going for me. Well done. You've got 10 seconds, then we're going to be bringing it down. Ready? So three, two, one. Keep marching for me. You're going to grab your ball. Ball goes in hand against the clear wall, feet to hip width apart. Ball against the wall. Okay, so we're taking this ball as high up as you can, going up onto your tiptoes, come back down, place the heel. And then slowly take it as low down the wall as you can, keeping the back nice and straight, weight through the feet. You pause, go back up to the top. High as you can for a stretch, bringing it back down. Lowering down as far as you can. So remember, this is as far as you are able. So if you find that you've got one arm that will work a little bit more than the other, take it as high as the hand can. And the other hand can take it all the way up to the top of the wall and back down again. You've got the support there. As you're lowering down, as low as both knees will allow you to go. Pausing there and slowly coming back up. Well done, we've got time. We're going to do one more all the way up. Pausing there, slowly back down, all the way down. Weight through the heel, toes are relaxed. And coming back up. Well done. Hold it there. We're marching the feet. We're going to move to our step. If you haven't got a step, I'll show you how we're going to do this exercise now. So all it will be without a step, step to the side, stepping back again. So it's our step touches. The bigger the step, the harder you're going to be working. And we can add those arms in as well. With your step, if you've got it, you can have support in front as well. Foot goes on to the step. Up, back down. So we're going to do 10, stepping with one leg, and then we'll change sides. So we're coming up, stepping back down. This can be done on the bottom step of your stairs. You'll also then have the balances for support if you need to. Okay? That's lovely. Give me two more like that. Then you can change sides. So for changing sides, you literally just turn around. So I'll have my back to you for a moment, stepping fully up onto the step box, arms back down. If you do need the support, you have it in front of you. Keep going like that for me. That's lovely. <laughs> Last three, I think. Well then, one more. Brilliant. And then we're marching again. Wonderful. Okay, picking up your ball for me. Do you have your ball? You're going to keep your feet moving. So whether they're marching, if you need a rest, you're tapping the toes. The ball is going to go behind your back, trying to have a space between your back and the ball. Elbows are squeezing back, shoulder blades are squeezing together. You press the hands together and release. Press the hands together and release. So we squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. Keep going like that for me. Well done. So we squeeze and release. So remember with this one, we 
you can keep the feet moving. If you need to sit down, have a sit down. You'll be on the front third of your chair. Okay, back nice and upright. It's tempting to let the head poke forward to get the arms to come around, but we're trying really hard to keep that good posture the whole time. Okay, well done. Squeezing and release. Squeeze and release. You're breathing normally. Shoulders are relaxed. We're squeezing through the muscles in the upper back. That's great. Well done. You should be feeling it by now. You've got four more of these to do. Three more. Last two. And one. Well done. Relax the arms. Give the shoulders a circle. I think they need it after that one. The next exercise, we're going to be getting that heart rate to come back up again for me. So we're nice and tall. We're lifting that knee to come up. So again, you can choose your level. We're aiming to get that heart rate back up. So on that RPE scale that we're looking at, that 13 out of 20. So feeling that you're working moderately hard. Okay, able to hold a breathy conversation. But you should be feeling warmer, breathing a little bit deeper. If you want to make it hard, if you find your heart rate isn't up a little bit, you could hold the conversation comfortably. You need to be working a little bit more. So we could add the arms in that little bit higher. They can reach and pull. You can change the speed. We can go quicker to make it more difficult. You can add your hand weight, your water weight. But if you're finding it's getting too hard, if you're pushing towards a 15 on that scale, and you need to bring it down, lower the arms. Take the arms out if you need to. If you still need to, you can take it down. Do that heel dig instead. So you choose whichever level that you need to work at to be able to get the best out of this workout. Well done, though. Whatever level you're working at, you're doing great. So we keep going. We've got a few more of these to do. Well done. So don't go with the speed that I'm at. Remember, you're working at the speed that helps you to have the best workout that you can have for today. We're going to do a few more. We're going to do eight more on each side. Well done. That's four more. Three more. Last two. And one. March it out. Brilliant. Okay. We get to have a sit down. <laughs> they don't happen often. You need your ball. You're sitting on your chair. You're going to sit on the front third of the chair. So there's a gap between yourself and the backrest of the, the chair. The ball goes between your knees. You sit nice and tall. You're wiggling your toes to be able to help with the circulation. You squeeze your knees in. Pause. Release a little bit, but not enough that you lose the ball. So we squeeze. Pause and release. Squeeze, pause and release. Nice, squeeze in. We feel the muscles of the inner thigh working and your toes are wiggling the whole time. Keep thinking about your posture, shoulders are relaxed. That's great, well done. So we squeeze, hold and then release. That's great. So it's tempting on this one that we start to slouch because we're tired. Try your best to stay as upright as you can, keeping the shoulders relaxed and down the spine, breathing normally throughout. Well done. One more like this, we're going to change it slightly. This time, we're just going to squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, and squeeze. You can feel the muscles working, but you're controlling that release as well. Toes are wiggling normally, and you're squeezing normally throughout. Well done. Good. So you can choose the squeeze and hold, the squeeze and release bit. The other choice we've got for our last set of these is going to be small squeezes. So you squeeze, 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 squeeze. Little squeezes all the time. Muscles of the inner thigh working. Feel it over muscles, but you're still keeping the upper body nice and relaxed. So when we come to do this exercise again, you choose the level or the type of squeeze that you want to do. Well, then we're going to do 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and rest. That's the last sit down you're going to have for a minute. We're up. March in there. Your next exercise is a step box. So we're going to be stepping straight up. Coming straight back down. If you don't have a step box, we do this on the floor. We step forward, forward, back, back. And after 10 
you change so the other leg will step forward. With this one, adding arms will make it more difficult. If you've got your step box or bottom step of the stairs, then we can go. We step fully up onto the step, all the way back down. So it's always heel up first, toes first to come back down. You can hold on if you need to with the pull. You can get the arms working. Any arms that feel comfortable. If you want to make it more difficult, you can either speed up or you can add arms. If you're speeding up, make sure you're still able to control the movement. We've got a few more on this leg, then we'll change sides. Let's do two more. Lovely. Change sides. So we step up with the other foot first. Whole foot is on the step box each time. That's great. If you find this is too much and you need a little rest, all you can do is just stay on the floor and tap the toe onto the step box instead. So when you've caught your breath again, if you feel ready to, you just join back in with a stepping, straight up and down onto the step box. If you want to make it harder, you can add a little bit of a sneaky knee lift in, so make sure that you feel comfortable and stable on the box. And if you need to, slow it down just a little. You've got lots of choices there. Okay. So our step ups if we want. We've got our tapping onto the step box. If you need a little bit of a rest. But if you haven't got your step box, we've got our stepping forward, stepping back. Lovely. Knees are staying soft all the time with these ones as well. That's great. You've got four more to do. So four more. Three more, last two, and one. Well done, march it there. Okay, you need your ball again for this next one. So, with your ball in hand, this is looking at shoulder mobility. We can take the ball behind your back, bring it round in front. So the hands are grabbing the ball behind your back and in front of you. You're trying to keep the ball away from the body if you can. We can change direction, just to make sure that both arms are working as far as they comfortably can. If you need to, you can trickle the ball around the body to begin with, building up to be able to have the hands away from the body. As a progression, we start to change where this ball is circling. So can you take the ball behind your head, keeping the head still? Can you take the ball around the chest, keeping the head still. Can it come around the rib cage? Can it come around the waist? Can it go around the hips? Can it go under one leg? Then back up around your head, the chest, the ribs, the waist, the hips, the other leg. Then can we change direction? So every time we're trying to keep those arms working, Keeping the posture nice and upright. So it's all about that range of movement around the shoulders and a little bit of balance in there as well for you. So if you find that with that knee lift that you're not able to balance, then now, knee down, what we'll do is bring that in as an individual exercise for you in one of our next circuit sessions. It is something that you can practice waiting for the kettle to boil. And it is something that's important to bring in your every day, if possible. We've got one more round to go. All the way around the body. That's great. Shoulders should be feeling nice and warm. Last one. Perfect, well done. Little march there. Okay, when to get the heart rate up. So again, we're wanting now building the heart rate and breathing rate up towards that 13 on the scale. With or without your hand weight, easier version. Tap your toes to the side, bring it back in. Toe to the side, bring it back in. More difficult, we start to add arms. So the leg can go out to the side, arms are lifting to shoulder level. If you want to, you can use your hand weight. We can go one arm at a time if you're finding it a little bit tricky. So the bigger the movement, the more that heart rate will lift, bringing us into that 13, that breathy conversation on the scale. Okay, so we've got a few of these 
to do, you choose your speed, you choose the size of your movement. Make sure the knees are staying soft all the time so we're not locking that knee out. The weight is even through the foot as your side is going out. Arms are controlled as they lift and lower. And as we said before, if you do need to bring it down, keep your legs going. Just rest the arms down by your side or on your hip. Okay, we'll change it back to single arm. Or both if you can. Well done. So you should be noticing you are warmer. You're breathing deeper. Might even be a little bit sweaty, but that's okay. As long as you're able to hold that breathy conversation, we can keep going. Well done. Got a few more of these to do. We've got eight and seven. Lovely. Six, five, last four. So you control it. You know it's the last few. Two and one. Well done. Last exercise for our circuit. This is where you need your little bit of a ball space and you need your ball. So you're going to stand just near but not touching a wall. Your feet are about shoulder width apart, ball is in front of you. You're going to turn and try and tap the ball to the wall, but keeping the hips still. Bring the ball in front of you and around to the side. So you'll know if your hips are not staying still because you'll feel the wall against your bottom. Okay? So it's around to the side, bring it to center. Round to the side, bring it to center. Your toes are wiggling all the time, but just tapping the ball. If the ball can't reach the wall, don't worry. It's just giving us something to aim towards. And then you'll notice, the more often you're doing this session, that you'll be able to get that little bit further. It'll all become a little bit easier the more that we do these circuit sessions. Well done. We've just got a couple more of these to do on each side. That's great. One more on each side. Make sure those hips are staying still. Lovely. Well done. Bring it into a march. And that's your circuit session complete for today. Have yourself a little drink. And then we're going to make sure you're going into your cool down. Okay, so we're going into our cool down. Make sure you've had yourself a drink. Remember, this is designed to bring your heart rate and breathing rate back down to work at your own level and at the speed that suits you best. So we're starting off. Feet are marching for me. Lovely. Feet go just a little bit wider. We're going to do some large arm circles. So we're breathing in, nice big stretch up, bringing the arms round. In this bigger range that you can manage, that's really good. Give me two more like that. Nice big stretch up and lowering the arms. One more time. That's perfect. So our big moves come in straight away with our knee lift. Arms are going as high as you can manage. Knee as high as you can manage. Okay. Well done. If you need to take it smaller, then that's fine. If you need to go slower, that's also fine. You've got a few more of these to do. Well done. We're into a march in between each move. So if ever you do get confused, just bring it into a march. Join back in when you can. So with our next one, we're going to be stepping to the side. Taking that step as big as you feel that you can. Make sure you're working within the space that you've got. Arms are reaching as high as you can manage. So if it needs to come lower, that's all right. Heart rate is still quite high at this point, but we are going to be bringing it back down. So with each of the moves, we're going to be making them a little bit smaller as we go. That's lovely. Last few of these. Well done. We're bringing it back into a march. So we're marching out. The march is still quite big. We're using those arms. I'm going to turn side on so you can see. But our next move, you're tapping your toe behind you. The foot's tapping behind. Arms are reaching up. We're changing legs each time. It doesn't matter if you've gone with your right leg first or your left leg first, as long as you're changing legs. So arms are reaching up, foot's tapping back. Make sure it's only the toes that are coming down to the floor. We're keeping the heel up at this point. Well done. Just four more. Last two. And we're marching. Well done. <laughs> You know, I'm laughing because my panting hasn't changed at all. So from here, we'll be lifting again. But we're a little bit lower than we were at the start. So hands are reaching about chest height. Come
coming in towards the knee. The knee is lifting to a round about knee or hip height, if you can, or as high as you can manage. Well done. Last few of these. Good. And we're back into a march. So from here, we're tapping the toe out to the side. So the toe goes out, we bring it back in. We bring it into the feet, it's still like hip width, there's always a gap between the feet. Arms are lifting up into our half star action. Go to bounce shoulder height, the hands, or as much as you can manage. Remember, you are working within your own range, and we're aiming to bring that heart rate down with each move. Keep on going for me. Well done. Last few of these. That's really good. Last two and one. We're marching here, we're going back into our lunges, but this time hands are going to stay on your hips. We tap the toe behind, bringing the foot back in, but we're letting the arms have a little bit of a rest. Okay. Front knee is staying soft, weight is mostly through that front foot. We're thinking about stretching through the front of the hip, just a little bit with each movement. We got four more, and three, and two, and one, and we're marching it there. Lovely. As we're marching, thumb comes over the shoulder, just loosening up through the shoulder joint after all the work you've just done. Well done. Body staying nice and upright, thinking tall through the spine all the time. Well done. Last few of these. Okay, we're going to keep the movements a little bit smaller now. We're going to dig the heel in front. So nice and easy, hands are pushing in front. You're overemphasizing, pulling the toes up towards the shin. So we're starting to get a bit of a stretch into your calf. Well done. Last few. Then we're back into a smaller march. So this time, nice gentle march, but the feet are going to go a little bit wider, so we're five shoulder width apart. Add a little rock from one side to the other, so we're just rocking the way to cross. Then we're going to curl the heel up towards the bottom. The arms can reach and pull, they can stay on your hips, you can swing them gently from side to side, whatever works best, but we're focusing on the front of the thigh. So each time that heel comes round towards your bottom, you feel a gentle stretch coming through the front of the thigh. Knees are staying soft, breathing nice and even. Well done. Last two, one more. And then it's a very gentle march for me. From here, we're gonna go back to our heel digs. The heel is digging in front, but this time you bring the hands together and we press the arms forward, elbows out slightly, drop the chin down. So from the side, it looks like this. We're just stretching through the muscles between the shoulder blades and muscles of the upper back. With the heel dig, we're also stretching into the muscles of the lower leg. Last few. Relax the arms, give the shoulders a circle, and we're going to change that heel dig to a toe tap. So you're pushing the toes away from you, feel the stretch coming down the shin, and this time the hands are going to come round into the lower back, squeeze so shoulder blades and elbows back to just stretching through the chest. If you need to, you can march the feet instead, or you can have the feet still while we do this stretch if you find that you need that. Think tall through the spine, keeping the shoulders away from your ears. You relax the arms, give the shoulders a nice circle for them. We're going to bring the feet to a stop. Hand goes onto the same side shoulder. You walk your fingertips up and over as if you're scratching your back, and then you support the muscle on the belly of the muscle to feel the stretch down your tricep on the back of our arm. Make sure your head is still in centre so you haven't let the chin poke forward. Holding it there. Then relax the arm, give the shoulder a circle. We're staying on this arm. We're going to bring it across the body, holding on to the upper arm and just clutch that in, arm in towards you to feel the stretch on the back of the shoulder. Holding it there, breathing nice and steady. If you need to, you can pedal the feet. If you find that they just need a little bit of movement through them, that's fine. Relax the arm, give the shoulder a circle and we'll change sides. Hand onto the same side, shoulder, walk 
hold your fingertips up and over and support the arm, holding onto the belly of the muscle. Holding it there. Remember, we're breathing normally. We're still thinking about our posture, so we're not letting that chin go forward. And this elbow has got as high as you can manage. Holding it there. Then relax the arm down, give the shoulder a circle, and bring that arm across the body so you're holding onto the upper arm. Just bring it in towards you to feel the stretch around the back of the shoulder. Again, if you do want to just pedal the feet, then that's fine. Holding it there, stretch. And three, two, and one. Relax it, give that shoulder a circle. Just going into our tap backs that we did during our cool down. So we're tapping the toe, bringing it back in. Tapping the toe, bringing it back in. Just nice and steady. Still keeping that heel up for me. But in a moment, we're going to take the leg back. And we're going to hold it for a stretch. So this time, the foot goes back. Make sure you've got your balance or you've got support if you need it. Place the heel down to the floor, you bend the front knee and you feel the stretch in the calf muscle on that back leg. So this back leg is nice and straight with the heel to the floor. The front knee is over the heel. Holding that there for three, two, one. Think carefully, bring that foot back in and we'll change sides. So it's a big step back, get that heel down towards the floor. Bend the front knee, you've got support if you need it. Holding that there, so you've got that stretch coming into your calf muscle on that back leg. Hold for three, two, one, and carefully bring that leg back in. Just march your feet, just peeling the heels to come off the floor. And then when you're ready, feet are hip width apart, hands are on hips, if you need support again, it's there for you. Take a small step forward with one foot. You bend the back knee. You push the bottom back, keeping that front leg nice and straight. So you've got the stretch down the hamstrings and back and thigh. So from the side, we're in that position there with the back nice and straight. Tailbone tucked to the ceiling, feeling the stretch down the hamstring. If you want to, you can pull the toes up towards you, which brings the stretch into the bottom of the lower leg. Carefully then, now with the foot soft of the knee and take the time as you come up, and we can change sides. It's the same as before, it's a small step forward, bend in the back knee, pushing the bottom back, feeling the stretch down the hamstring, and if you want to, pull in the toe up. You have got your chair, if you want to, have a third of the chair, same position, one leg is nice and straight. It's a hinge forward, so we're not rounding the spine, we're trying to keep that spine nice and long. Well done. Then you carefully come back up, bring yourself back into that upright position with the feet a little bit more than shoulder distance apart for me. Taking a deep breath in. Knees go down, arms go up. We're stretching up to the ceiling for a full body stretch. Breathe out, let the arms come down, give the shoulders a circle. Then it's one more breath for me. So knees down, arms up. Big stretch up to the ceiling. Breathe out, hands down. Give the shoulders a circle. And just giving the hands a bit of movement, fingers moving, moving through the feet, little march if you need to, and you're done. Very well done, and I hope to 